with 100% certainty that there will be no crawl worms and trepidation blades in this match. And really, magic's poor for that. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, you're cutting it close, but it's actually not even close. It's like the metamorphose with the <laughs> Thalian play. Wonderful. Jake right. Van Luden's eating, drinking past the expiration date apple juice. What could go wrong? <laughs> past it's the expiration date. It's cider. It's cider. Unfiltered. Yeah, it's unfiltered cider. Unpasteurized. <laughs> Unpasteurized, yep. Oh, wonderful. So, still Shaper's Gift, so. <laughs> which seemed to indicate call blade. And there is sort of, uh, is that Feast of Famine? That is Feast of Famine. Alright, those are some nice looking Urza's Towers he's got there. I think this is like 602 in bed. Did you read the other one? So, gifts ungiven. These guys are resolving their uh, expired apple cider <laughs> while Jerry Thompson resolves his gifts ungiven. Uh, so, so the, uh, guys, there's some people playing magic here. Sword was remanded. Sword was remanded. And now we're uh, gifting. All right, and so the gifts on Given is going to grab a uh, power plant, a thirst for knowledge, a Teleria West, and an expedition map. So he is, he's going to get his Tron on no matter what. Yeah. That's one of the nice things about Gifts and Given in a Tron deck, when you have access to cards like Expedition Map. No matter what you get, you can, you know, achieve your Tron. Right. So it gives him the uh, Thirst for Knowledge and the Teleria West. It says, okay, you've got to, if you want that, you've got to have to work for it. And it gives him the slowest route to it. Very takes time, says go. Oh. Ooh, an end of turn cryptic command targeting the power plant. Jerry thirsting in response. Sorry, he could have played an Azorius signet there. He held on to it. You know, possibly to just be able to pitch that as one card. Seems reasonable. And he's got a very full grip. About to get a little fuller. It's a nice play. Uh, Cherry's going to have to discard even after pitching two cards. One of the strong things about cryptic commanding and a turn against these control decks is so you don't have to force them into situations where you know they didn't expect to have to discard cards and he got little to no value out of that thirst for knowledge. Both of these players playing their decks very differently than they would if they were playing against any other deck. Yeah, when you're playing this type of control mirror, you kind of have to grind it out. And Steven's done a very good job of uh, staying ahead on mana, which is something that's very difficult to do when you're playing against a Tron deck. You see his already signal. So 
you know, you play your other Tron piece and tutor for your third Tron piece. Seems like a reasonable course of action. Yeah. Yeah, he chooses to uh, just play the Celestial Colony. I feel like Azoria's Signet really makes this deck possible. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Doesn't make it possible for this deck to play Cryptic Command, though. So Mutavault picks up the Sword of War and Peace. Or Feast of Famine, I should say, sorry. Gets uh, half exiled. Stefan uh, has to search up a basic land there. Not the end of the world. Yeah, except I think he was hoping he was going to get to yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> untap all his lands there. It's a uh, pretty nice one when you uh, get to hit there with that. I mean, it seems like a, uh, a pretty aggressive play to make, though, when Jerry leaves the option of Teleria Westing for sure. Tron. Or maybe he thought he was holding remand. Is that the completed, uh... No. That's right, he only played the second Tron piece this turn. Last mm -hmm. turn, instead of playing replaying the second Tron piece, he played the Celestial Colonnade. Peaches Signet to the Thirst Tree Lounge. Okay. Cherry with a full grip here. Yeah, and three, three cards deeper in. At Thirst for Knowledge, one of the premier draw spells in the modern format. And he, and he goes for the complete Tron. So. Next turn, he's going to have umpteen manas. 13. Snapcaster Mage. He's going right? to. Next. Snapcaster Mage is going to get Cryptic Command. He's going to bounce a piece, set him back two turns again. And there's that Snapcaster Mage on Crypto Command. About to pick up a sword. It's just so brutal. Sort either on an, is that a Blink Moth Nexus? I believe that is a Blink Moth Nexus. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a Blink Moth Nexus is kind of the, uh, uh, the go to in the uh, for that new standard format. Event. But uh, in modern, you if you're dealing damage, you know, you don't want to try to be going for a full 30. So. Snapcaster Mage picks up the sword. Attacks. There's also some cash for the first, second. Third and fourth to help with the payments that you might incur going to those events. Jerry uh, contemplating whether or not he wants to take this hit. I'm not sure. Yeah. Odds I think he has a repeal and he can repeal the sword. Food. If you bring in outside food, you will be asked to get rid of it or leave the venue until you are done with it. And he finds a path to exile. Judge Mike Cooler. Can you open those doors again? But he also finds some burial rights. And I believe he has an Elshnar in his hand. If he has that in his hands, he might want to like take the hit here. <laughs> That's another nice thing about Thirst for Knowledge is, I mean, if you draw on Burial Rites, it's often uh, pretty upsetting. You don't even play anything that can cast it from your hand. But uh, being able to just discard it to the Thirst for Knowledge, you know, Make for some pretty ridiculous turns. Mm. All right. Let's see, 
Jerry now uh, access to 13 mana this turn if he so desires it. Right. Could attempt to uh, put an Elish Norn on the battlefield. Excuse me. Elish Norn's pretty big. I think that's what's about to happen here. Well, maybe not. No, it is. Okay. But would you like to counter it? Because I've got a bit of a all right. I like Elshnorn's hat a lot. Yeah. You wouldn't like it if you were sitting behind her in the movies. It's true. She does not take my hand. <laughs> I don't want to like talk to her about it because I mean, I'm a tutu. <laughs> She's like to die in her presence. <laughs> I guess I'm a one-two. I could beat a squirrel in a fight, but not a grizzly bear. <laughs> We're all one-twos. Colony can pick up the sword. Yeah. Sounds like that's what's going to happen. Take four. Jerry takes the hit. No, did he take the hit? No, he's discarding. He discarded Scully turn. Oh, he discarded. Okay, I thought he. Yeah. Put a path off the top for Jerry. Solid draw step. Another tower. Gives Jerry access to, yeah, uh, enough to Emrockle if he were to draw it for some reason or another. I mean, that's, that's the top end of top ends, so. I mean, he obviously does not have the Rockle. Because if he did, he would have cast it by now. The game would likely be over. Let's see, I wonder if he has something else big that he can do. I mean, he can attack for an extra. An extra six with that colonnade. Yeah, what's nice though is that Jerry doesn't have to use, uh, Jerry can tap a, like a power plant, a mine, and a signet to activate his colonnade. Yeah. And then his colonnade will be a six six that can block the sorted up colonnade of seven. And even though Jerry, Jerry's colonnade is unequipped with anything, it will still beat Stefan's really? colonnade in fight. Really smash it. Oh, yeah. Profit. Six, six beats and four, four every time. Ooh, this seems uh, a little aggressive. Colonnade eats the colonnade. And so. Oh. Cryptic command. Cryptic command. <laughs> What's it doing? Jerry's oh. got a remand. Um. <laughs> Stevens gonna pack this one in. Yeah. Reasonably so. Yeah, I mean. 
at that point. The major problem here is that in, in these like kind of controly mirrors, the big battle is usually over like hitting your land drops. Like, people who are used to having played control mirrors back in the day, the first person who starts missing land drops is more often than not going to be the person who loses the game. In a control mirror, like, it's not unreasonable at all to keep a six or seven land hit. Uh, Jerry's deck is capable of playing lands that are two or three lands in one. Sure. Yes. So he's just going to kind of a huge advantage once the game gets to that point. Seven kind of needs to play an aggressive game. He was kind of playing blue LD. Yeah. And I mean, he was he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He understood the matchup. Yeah. So uh, Doug Potter on Twitter saying that uh, he felt like calling us the squires of the world is a bit liberal and thinks that most Magic players range from 01 to 04 in his opinion. So like they, they couldn't actually kill a squirrel, but you know the squirrel couldn't kill them either. Yeah. It just kind of be this like. Yeah, I don't know if that's pawing at one another. Yeah. I don't know. Enough squirrels can take down a werewolf. Yeah, there's definitely We've this equipment it. called guns that can only be equipped to humans. <laughs> Unless you're in Canada. <laughs> and then anybody can use a gun. No, it's, I think it's really hard to equip a gun to a human again. Why is that? Pretty, you know, progressive laws. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> really, I thought Canada was all, like, wildernessy. I thought they had progressive laws in other ways. Yeah. And four players for a minimaster. Signing up commander. Elka quality. And we have three Is that people in the quality? legacy win box. Yeah. We have five more people in the legacy deck. That win box will happen. That's completely ridiculous. That, also you know, signing up standard win box. You need four more players for that box. The drinking ages have to be so much different. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about some of the, uh, some some of the, the decks. decks. Some here. of the top decks. From... Uh, these are the top decks from, do we have old standings here? So standings after round nine. So this is all the players who were uh, either 9-0, so we had 9-0 or X-0 and 1. Yep. And beyond, it looks like, maybe a couple extras. So Owen Turtenwald, we saw his deck, Zoo. Yeah, and um, uh, let's see, how, so he's only playing two Thalia men. He does, however, have two uh, Geist of Saint Draft as well. He's playing a lot of one drops. This deck looks one good. Yeah. Uh, Jer Mats are pretty well positioned right now. Jeremy Barbeau, one eight and one on day draft. one. He's playing Malara combo. Uh, Martin Juza playing. With discard spells main. And a sappy Eric Stotter. Yeah. The real Project X. Uh, so, uh, and then Martin Juza we saw also eight and one playing Malara combo. So that's two Malara combos in the top decks. Yeah. Uh, Chad Meyer was nine zero day one. And he's playing John. He was playing John. Nice. That is that is a Jundi John. It's as Jundi as Jund gets. It yeah. looks like. Uh, then we see a Splinter Twin combo uh, played by. Or is this maybe this is Ryan Salat? Ryan Salat. Where is he? He was he was also eight one. So I guess these are the top. These are the decks that were. Right around these 10. are the decks that were maybe. Uh, Andrew Olschwager, obviously everyone loves this deck. Yeah, it's the coolest deck ever. Uh, here's Bronson Magnin. There's the Agro Loam deck you were talking about. Oh, let's look at this. All right, so... And then uh, James Orn's playing uh, playing oh. his sort of straddle, his blue-red combo deck, which can either be Splinter Twin or Grape Shot combo. Bronson's deck has uh, a flame jab. Nice. Pretty cool. But no burning vengeance. No I'm burning sad. vengeance. He has, he has Raven's Crime and Flame Jab and no burning vengeance. No heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stefan uh, looking at his opening hand, making a decision. What's he going to do? They both keep. All right. Stefan leading things off with a Hallowed Fountain. Hallowed Fountain, one of the uh, lands we had to wait the longest for in Ravnica block. We're anxiously awaiting for that third set to come out to get my duels. Yeah, they were dark. 
Missouri Missouri Signet Signet gets spell snared. Spell snare surprisingly strong against the Tron decks. Sure. But no no third land from Berrios. And that's gonna be a huge issue here. You see that flick. Like, oh come on. Look at all these awesome cards. And they are awesome. Signing up a legacy win a box. Signing up commander events. And regular booster drafts. Also, guys, we're about for those of you who need the 12 noon modern challenge. Sure, you're going to need 19 here. Not going to break his expedition map until he figures out what the missing piece of the Tron puzzle is. Yeah, I mean, you know, he hasn't drawn a power plane or a mine yet. Once he draws one, he knows he needs mm -hmm. to go grab the other right. one. Not a big deal. He can just leave it there and play. I tell you, the Tron deck seems really good. Yeah, the Tron deck's really strong. And, you know, I've been surprised that we've seen, you know, only Jerry and Luis playing it because when I've been playing online, Tron, is, Tron seems to be Tier 1. And the, the Tier 1 is Malyra and Tron. Right. Been doing click, meeting a remand. Just try for the click again here right now. Oh, do you wait until his draw step again? I don't know. I feel like people might be a little aggressive with their clicks using it on the draw step so often. I like to do it on people's end steps. Pass the turn, draw a card. Nope. Click. Oh, another remand. Yeah, and I mean, Stefan, even being on the play here, so behind on lands that you know, it's going to be really difficult for him to make any headway. Jerry using this opportunity where Stefan has tapped all of his blue sources to okay. resolve a uh, gift sun given. We're going to need to see what he's going to go grab here. So he's got a uh, power plant. Oh, I needed that weed. An expedition map. Tolaria West and. Does he have a Noxious Revival or no? Or... I don't know if he wants to spend that. Maybe another Gips? Doesn't really matter what the fourth card is, he just gets Tron. Yeah, he just gets Tron. Thirst for knowledge? I'm not going to give you the thirst. I'm not going to give you the Tron piece itself. Yeah, I think you just give a map to Larry West. You know. It's not a factor fix, so I'm just going to his hands. Oh, he gave him the thirst map. Interesting. That seems, that seems like the best thing Jerry could ever ask for. Well, obviously, he'd rather have Tron piece thirst, but. <laughs> like. It's, Pretty close. Yeah. I mean, Jerry might might even just redraw into the Tron piece and then have a map to discard to his thirst now. <laughs> <laughs> like that happens. Okay. Well, there you go. I don't know if that's true. There are many, many people Click you. Let's see. I want to push that on very huh? I mean, on barrel rights is uh, pretty good with this hand, especially with the thirst. I, he handed Jerry that thirst, and that's. That's pretty. Uh, I mean, he's pretty, pretty close to being hand. able to play anything in that hand. Jerry's up one game to nothing here, as you can see. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, it feels like he's got this one. Really yeah, I mean, well these missed land drops from Stefan are uh, 
not boding well for him. I think that uh, I think Jerry is going to take this one down without too much of an issue. Yeah, you could have put the two lands in the graveyard and clicked the map. Yeah, you could have even done that. That was out. Thirst for knowledge. Put another tower. That is not. That is not good news for Stefan, because uh, the extra tower means that uh, Jerry, not on this next turn, but the turn afterward, is going to be casting an Amrakal. Yeah. So, unless Stefan can uh, somehow kill also him means, I mean, Jerry, that window. Jerry can also just put an Elish Norn into play here or the Iona into play here. Yep. Flashback on Burial Rights on Iona. I assume name Blue. Just a guess. Seems like a reasonable guess. I think it's very unlikely that uh, Stefan kept Path Exile in. Really? You gotta deal with an Elishnorn or an Iona if it comes in. He's gotta name blue. Do we know what color he named there? I'm assuming he names blue. Yeah, I'm assuming as well, also. Oh, he's thinking. And he named what? White. He named white, so he's worried about Path. Okay. And that seems fine because you know, the nice thing about naming white in that spot is that it forces your opponent to be on cryptic command. And if they're on cryptic command, they're tapping all of their mana for the cryptic command. And if they're tapping all of their mana for cryptic command, then those two turns where you want to, where you're setting up to play that Amrako, yeah. are going to be a breeze. Please come up to the event stage, meet your judge, tight hold. From Twisted Draft 7, we're missing Sean Rennes, Mike Abraham. An expedition map. Drafts already. Sean Rennes, Mike Abraham. And that's going to find Jerry the uh, power plant that he needs. John Butler, your event is also ready. John Butler to for your booster draft. So as long as Jerry has a land that comes into play untapped here well, for his next turn, yeah, then uh, he can just hard cast him wrong. Right. Yeah, six from the towers. You are almost out of time to sign up for the modern challenge. If you want to be the new modern challenge? You need to get up here and fill, fill up for the modern There's challenge. There's Moreland making an Make appearance sure in Stefan's deck. Card that's uh, you know kind of been waning a bit in standard that proved itself to be very Mike strong in equipment. Abraham. Sure. Your twisted draft is ready. Finding its way into Abraham. older Please formats now stage. also. Seeing playing legacy and modern. So, uh, it doesn't seem like Jerry has uh, the land that comes into play untapped. So he's going to uh, he's going to, have to wait a turn. Judge Matt Williams and scorekeeper, please. Play a map. Go get another one. Tower. Nope. Who and I? Go get the eye, Lucan. 
makes sense. It's like, how do you think the rest of this game is going to go? Did you snap cast your mages, thirst for knowledge? Yep. Digging, trying to find a cryptic command. He finds a cryptic command. I believe it's too late. It doesn't seem very helpful. Yeah. And it's kind of a rare thing to say, you know, cryptic command doesn't seem too helpful. But when it's this stage of the game, you're absolutely right. Yeah. We're going to almost certainly see... Well, I guess he can break up. Yeah, it doesn't even break it up for... Yeah, for more than a turn. Jerry falling 17 here for an attack. Oh, no. Snapcaster. And I think that's just completely irrelevant. Again, flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. The eons will be torn by the spell that Jerry's about to cast yeah. next turn. Aeons, that's an interesting pronunciation for... Aeons? No. Uh, oh, I thought you meant something differently entirely. <laughs> Or we were edited for TV again. <laughs> Jacob Schaefer, please come report the scorekeeper. Jacob Schaefer, we need to see you up front. Anybody going to need to So, Crypto Command, bounce the. Crypto Command bounced the. Uh, Iona. Iona. Go get a little mod. And yeah, it's uh, it's over. Here's it's good. It's good. It's like right here. Here's a Morocco. Yeah. I would like another turn. Another turn, please. Or a Winnebox. And Seven's just going to back in. And there's Jerry uh, winning another match, uh, completing to 11 and 2 now. Right. Or 10 and 2. 10 and 2, yes. Right. Can we get Jerry? Let me see if we